by right now is my is my friend K. Carl Smith. Good morning, sir. Hey, how you doing, Willie? Thank you once again for the opportunity to be on your magnificent show and opportunity to share this this message of uh, promoting racial healing and uh, respect to the Constitution and creating wealth. You know, when you say creating wealth. I don't think a lot of people understand, especially, especially, and, 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 and I'm going to get, I'm, and if y'all, if y'all would excuse me, if I could, you know, use the term that from Joe Biden, if y'all would excuse me for a minute, um, that we don't understand. I don't think a lot of people understand what wealth actually is. I think that they look at the Kardashians on TV and think that that's wealth, but that's not the kind. That's not just the kind of wealth we're talking about, is it? No, no, it's not about making a million dollars. It's, it's about prosperity. And prosperity doesn't just necessarily mean money, but it's a quality of life that you live. I think is what uh, what Douglas would have said. When we we were having a conversation yesterday, I, I guess it was yesterday. It was yesterday, and, and and I told you that you know I went to the barber shop getting a haircut, and somebody and somebody asked me, you know. Are, are, you, are you taking the show to the convention? I said, yes, yes, yes. And somebody asked me if I was a Republican or not. And I told them I was and got into a discussion. You told me something that you tell people when they ask you if you're a Republican. What, is, what do you tell people when they ask if you're a Republican? I tell them I'm not a Republican. I tell them that I'm a Frederick Douglass Republican or a Frederick Douglass Liberty Messenger. Um, there's a difference between a Republican and a Frederick Douglass Republican. As a Frederick Douglass Republican, um, you have to admit that today's Republican Party does not resemble the party of Frederick Douglass. So we are anti-establishment Republican Party. We are anti-status quo Republican Party. And with this Frederick Douglass Republican movement, we want to help today's Republican Party recapture and reclaim this political distinction. I understand. I, 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 and, I and I think, and, and we're going to talk about it a little bit, and I, and I don't think that, I, that you're having an effect. I know that you're having an effect. But, uh, but again, I think people are still having, are going to have trouble differentiating. For example, give us an example of, of, of how a Frederick Douglass Republican thinks about the economy, for instance, and the established Republicans think about the economy. Yeah, you got a lot of background there. I think I heard what you said in terms of how does a Frederick Douglass view the economy versus the, the status quo, Republican right. Party? Um, I, it, it comes from this. It comes from this perspective. The, uh, the the status quo Republican Party has to make the plight of the poor and the working poor legislative priority, not in terms of uh, entitlements for a lifetime, but in terms of make sure we pass legislation that empowers the poor and elevates the poor to become entrepreneurs. They they give a lot of lip service to that, but we need to see some things more concrete and substantive uh, since the time of uh, of heart. I uh, well, I understand. You know, it, it's interesting that it, 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 that you say that 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 and, and, and people will and, and, and we talked about this, and I'm, we'll talk about this. People will say, well, okay, Carl, it seems like you're blaming poor people for being poor, but that's not it at all, is it? No, there's two types of poor in the world, and the Bible talks about the poor. You have your legitimate poor, those are people we should have. That's a biblical mandate. That's a no-brainer. Then you have your lazy poor, and uh, there's no responsibility to have the lazy poor. If a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. So um, it's about recognizing we have people in this, in this economy that needs a hand up, not a, a hand out. And that's what Douglas advocated. You know, you, when you study Douglas, he is a man who was born below poverty. In essence, he did not even own his own body. But through uh, putting together an action plan for his life, this man elevated himself to become an advisor to five U.S. presidents. And, and here's, a, here's a trivia question for you, Willie. Douglas died of a heart attack in uh, 1895 at the age of 77. How much money do you think he had accumulated in wealth at the time of his death? Um, I think he had accumulated about $2 million. $300,000, which is about 25, it's equivalent to $25 million today. So he had done well. <laughs> he did well. I and mean, think about it now. Nobody has started their life out worse than what Douglas did. I mean, nobody's starting off below poverty like Douglas. 
And uh, the, the question then has to be asked, how did he do it? And uh, that's something that, that, that needs to be uncovered and discovered and repeated because success is not a secret. Success is a process. And he told the government, he, he shared a plan how to help blacks coming out of slavery. He said, don't, he said treat them as hell, but no favor. You know, you know that's, a, that's an interesting line. Treat, treat, treat people fair, but with no favorites. And I think that, and, and, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I think that we, that we have completely lost what that means. Um, because when people are saying they want fair treatment, it obviously, it doesn't mean that anymore. It means that you, I want you to treat me differently, separately. Give me, give me breaks because, give me a break because of history. Give me a break because of, of, of imagined past wrongdoing. How do we get past that? Um, okay, Carl, cause, 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 you know, it, it drives, frankly, it drives me personally out of my mind. It drives me nuts because people aren't asking, people aren't asking for a fair shot. They're asking for a, an even playing field, which means that, you know what, it's not really even. I want, I want my path to be even. I want your path to still be as hard as it was before. Yeah, people, people are looking for guaranteed outcomes instead of a guaranteed opportunity. And, uh, I think the way the way we get around that is for each individual quit sitting around waiting for somebody to take care of you. Douglas, Douglas didn't do that. Douglas basically was on he was on the plantation. He was on slave master entitlements. At the age of twenty, he said, "You know what? I'm getting out of here. I'm, I'm going to escape. I want my life. I want liberty, and I want the opportunity to pursue the happiness that I want in my life and my family." He said, "Peace. I'm out of here." He escaped. So he, so he took responsibility for his own life. And uh, it created, created a pretty sizable uh, wealth for his, for his success in his family. You know, you know, we, I, I, again, when we say these kind of things, and I, and, and I want to get your, I'm, 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 I need to get your opinion about this. When we say these kind of things in our community, that we need to start looking at our own selves and taking responsibility for our own lives. Um, it sometimes falls on deaf ears um, when we're talking about. I'll give, I'll give you. I'll give you a quick example. My wife is a uh, manager at a local event. Um, she, when I last year, she came home. She was so frustrated uh, because she interviewed three young black women, all under the age of 24. I'm gonna Everybody I'm gonna and, and those, and those three women, have, uh, there were five kids. I've got my client two, two information on it. I really they can't had make that five happen. children. No man in the house. They had five between them. They had five children. And and and, 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 and I look at someone like that and go and grab them by the shoulders and say, you know what? You have to. You have to you put them in my take bag, responsibility in my bag. for your own life. How do we get that message to them? You know what, what we have to do. You really have to. We, you really have to defeat the message of the liberal progressive Democrats because that's what they advocate. They want to take care of us. Um, I encourage your reading audience when they get a chance to Google. Linda B. Johnson commissioned my speech to the graduates of Howard Howard University. In that commissioner speech, what he said was this. He said, you need more than yourself to become successful. You need the government to take care of you. And think of that crap. That, that's, that's, that's a bunch of BS. That's the totally opposite of Douglas. Douglas said, when they asked him, when, the, when they freed the slaves, they asked, what should we do with the Negro? Douglas said, leave him alone. He's done enough already. Leave him alone. And here's Johnson saying, you can't make it by yourself. The government, the government needs, needs to become your God and your source. And that's what's happening. So we got to re-educate. We have to put examples in front of our children. And not just our children, but people who are, who are under this economic cloud of oppression. We got to put an example in front of them so they have no more excuses. And that example is Frederick Douglass. Well, you know what? That's, that is a scary thing. That is a scary thing that, 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 that Baines Johnson would get in front of. Of a, you know what, and I don't understand it at all, that you would get in front of a, of a group of, gra of graduates. I yes, mean, sir. Graduates. We're not talking about people that, I mean, that, you got, I mean, that, you, that you got from a work camp. I'm talking about graduates. People have gone to the rigors of a university and tell them, you can't do it on your own. You, there's, no, there's no possible way. You need government. 
That's exactly right. That's exactly what he said. And here's the thing. So what, what's he, what he's telling these folks, because you've been a victim since your ethnic group has been a victim for so long, you can't do it. And, I'm, and Doug said that's a lie. Because think about it. When you see yourself as a victim, you have to depend on somebody else to go get it for you. When you see yourself as more than, more than a conqueror, you, you develop the means to go get it for yourself. And that's what Doug was talking about. Wow. That, that, that is amazing. And you know what? And, and again, if, if, if you've never heard this, if you don't know about, about Frederick Douglass, um, K. Carl Smith has a book um, that, and, and we're going to talk about some of the training you do. K. Carl Smith has a book that you need to get. Um, K. Carl, tell people about your book and where they can get it. Well, you can come to our website. The, the website is called Frederick Douglass. And remember, Douglass put his last name with two S's. Frederick Douglass Republican, no S or Republican, FrederickDouglassRepublican.com. And basically what the book is all about, it is an action handbook for conservatives. It gives conservatives the information they need so they can engage, so they can talk to their friends, their family members, and their fellow citizens about their conservative values and where they're not and will not be accused of being a racist or an Uncle Tom. Because I, mean, I, I think that's so important. Um, because, and, and again, if, if, I could be, if I could be racial for a minute, I think that black people have to start talking to black people on this level. I don't think, I really don't believe that, and this sounds terrible, but I think that our problems in our own community can only be solved by people in our own community. And I, I, I really do, and I think that we need to start talking to people in a real way and getting training. You guys do training, too. You have, I mean, you're running around the country doing training. Tell, tell us about the training you're doing. Uh, you said something about training. Yes. Um, are you are, are, about my stuff doing training? Yes. Are you doing? Are, I mean, you're doing some footage of the training, are you not? Yeah, yeah. What we're doing, I'm, I'm, I do this all over the all over the 50 states, but right now I'm focusing on the uh, seven of the, the the seven major swing states. And what we're going, what we're doing, we're traveling to the seven swing states, and we are singing to the choir. We have to sing to the choir because the choir needs to be equipped, the choir needs to be empowered, the choir needs to be trained to go out and bring in new choir members. And we do that through this Frederick Douglass methodology. And also the choir needs to be taught how to sing a new song, and that's the Frederick Douglass Liberty Messenger message. That's exciting. That is exciting. Exciting. We appreciate that. Um, you, you know what? I, I, and again, if, if, if you're interested in getting, no, I'm going to say if you're interested. You are in, because you're listening, you're interested. Um, today, they can, uh, take our, I, I'm not giving people the option. Go get the freaking book. Go to, hey, hey, go to the website and get the book. Because, hey, really? Yes? Yeah? There's two books now. I wrote a companion guide to the book. So when you come to the site and you make that $20 donation, you're actually going to get two books. You're going to get the Frederick Douglass Republican book, the one I just described, and you're also going to get a book called The Most Asked Challenges. Here's why I wrote that book, The, 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 the Most Asked Challenges. Think about it. When you study the ministry of Jesus Christ, you remember how the Pharisees and the scribes always try to challenge to trap Jesus, to get him to say something damaging so it could discredit him. That's what liberals do with conservatives. So what we did, we identified the most, the 12 most asked challenges that conservatives will face and how to take those challenges like the Christ did and you turn around and make a teachable moment. Let me give an example. If you're out there engaging at the local level and uh, somebody asks you, are you a conservative, uh, what would you say? If you say yes, you just lost. Because I talk about in the book how the war has a negative connotation, especially in the minority communities. Because you say you're a conservative in the, in the view and the eyes of the minority community, you just said you're a black racist, you're a deep party racist, you're a Christian racist, because of the word conservative. So for each challenge, we take it, we explain the background of it, and we give you a suggestive response how to take that challenge and turn it on and make a teachable moment. Wow. For example, K. Carl, K. Carl, you're a conservative. I am a Frederick Douglass Republican, and I believe in the four life empowering values of Frederick Douglass, respect for the Constitution, respect for life. I believe in limited government, and I believe in personal responsibility. And you ask that person, do you share those same values? 
And they're probably going to say yes. You say, guess what? It makes you a conservative. But it's still that makes you a Frederick Douglass Liberty Messenger or a Frederick Douglass Republican. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, Kay, Carl, listen, we're going we're gonna to hook up again before this election because we have to because, 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 this is, and because this is more important than just the election um, because this, is, this has to start being a generational thing, obviously. Um, this is not like one or two election cycles. This is, a genera- this is a generational change. Listen, it was always good talking with you, man. I'm so glad we hooked up again. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a call before November, um, and if you're available, we're definitely going to get back on the air. Well, I'll let you know. I'll be in town for about three weeks. I'll let you know. i got to speak oh, again. Cool. I'll give you cool. details later. And then we'll hook up. That sounds great. Uh,